Good evening, Victory Tribe. Welcome to Victory Now. Hi, my name is Joel Deshay, and I wanted to talk about something that uh, Nate Tanner talked about. He said tarrying. You know, uh, we don't have to tarry and wait for the Holy Ghost now, but, and we'll go through that anyway. When most of the churches talk about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they tell you that you have to tarry or wait until the Holy Ghost gives you utterance or until the Holy Ghost comes upon you or whatever that is. Then you go up front and the elders are those appointed to pray for you. Come up and say, brother, let go and let God. Or another one will say, brother, hang on there until the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Well, you know, unfortunately, these things kind of get you confused and, and to the point of resisting what you have already been given freely. The church has taught people that in order to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have to wait or tarry until the Holy Ghost comes on you or you're given the gift of tongues. But the Holy Ghost, once you're saved, is already inside you. And we don't have to tarry for the Holy Ghost anymore because he's already inside. And he's already waiting for us to immerse us into his power. But a lot of times we get in the way and expect him to come on us and take our tongue over. Well, it, it doesn't happen that way. You know, he's, wait, he's already there waiting, saying, come on, come on, let me go, let me go. <clears throat> but we're sitting there waiting for him to speak through our mouth like we're a puppet. And we're not a puppet. You know, we are our own thing and we have to speak. And when we start to speak, then he gives us the utterance. Okay, uh, a lot of churches don't even teach that there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. In one of the places, we'll go over that, but Paul went there and said, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they said, well, you don't even know what that is. So a lot of churches don't teach it because they think it was just for them. But Jesus thought that the Holy Spirit was important enough to require his disciples to wait until the Holy Ghost was sent, and they were endued with power. And here's one of our cases in point. With Cornelius in Acts 10.1, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. He wasn't even a Jew, okay? A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave many alms to the people and prayed to God always. <coughs> he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he looked to him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms a come up before memorial before God. So even here we see that God was already drawing the Gentiles before, you know, before the Gentiles were actually called or Paul went to them. Jesus was already, God was already calling the Gentiles in their, in their, into a love relationship with him. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose name is Peter. And in Acts 10, 22, it says, And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, a just man, and one that fears God, and of good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned by God by a holy angel to send for you into his house and to hear your words. So Peter was on the rooftop praying, and the Lord, in three different visions, told him, Don't call common what I have already accepted. So when the men from Cornelius' house got to the house where Peter was staying, the Lord said, go with him, because I want to talk to him. <clears throat> so in Acts 10, 28, it says, And he said unto them, You know how that it, Peter was talking to Cornelius after he had gotten there. You know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come to one of another nation. But God has showed me that I shall not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came to you without gainsay or without any hesitation. As soon as I was sent for, I asked, therefore, for what intent have you sent me for me? And in 34, Acts 10, 34, it says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel preached peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word I say you know, which was published through all Judea and began <clears throat> from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Now he's going to tell him about Jesus. 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. How God raised him up on the third day and showed him quickly. <clears throat> Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose. Now he's talking about the 12 disciples and all the other close disciples. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him shall re receive remission of sins. Now here's your point. While Peter spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. They didn't have to wait. They didn't have to sit there for a week or two or three or a year or 10 years or whatever. But the Holy Ghost fell on him while Peter was speaking. And they of the circumcision, the guys that came with Peter, which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on, corn, on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well? So here's one example where we're shown that tarrying, they didn't have to tarry. They, they just believed and the Holy Ghost came on them. And here's another example for your consideration. In Acts 19.1, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said to him, We've not even heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. So these guys, like a lot of churches, are all, don't even know about the Holy Ghost. And he said to them, To what then were you baptized? And they said, To John's baptism. And that's where Jesus was baptized by John also, because John was the forerunner of Jesus. He was showing, he was kind of leading the way and dozing the path for Jesus. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him that was, should come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. So I'm, so I'm going to ask, where is the tarrying that a lot of, teaches, a lot of churches teach? There wasn't any tarrying. There was all, Peter or Paul laid hands on them. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost. While Peter was preaching, the, the Holy Ghost came on the Gentiles. So <clears throat> we've got now two examples that we don't have to tarry. A lot, of, a lot of the churches, like I said, teach that you have to tarry, you have to tarry, you have to wait, you have to wait. Well, these two examples show that we don't have to wait. It's us that gets in the way. Even with sin and forgiveness, we're the ones that build a wall between us and God. God doesn't build. He's trying to tear the wall down, and we keep building brick on brick. Even when we consider in the Old Testament examples of the Spirit coming on the prophets, we don't see that we had to wait for periods of time before the Spirit came on it. For example, with Samson in, first, in Judges 14.5, Then Samson went down and his father and his mother to Timnah and came into the vineyards of Timnah, and behold, a young lion roared upon him against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and tore, and tore apart the, the lion as he would have torn a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, he did, he had not, but he had not told his father or his mother what he had done. Samson would have been in big trouble <laughs> if when he needed the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God, the strength that he had, if he didn't just all, God didn't come on him right then and there. He'd have been torn up by the lion, but the Spirit came on him and he defended himself against the lion. So <clears throat> here's another example that we don't have to wait for God to come upon us or the Holy Spirit to come upon us. Judges 15, 13, and they spoke to him saying to Samson, this is Samson again, behold, we will bind you fast and deliver you into their hand, but surely we will not kill you. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And when he had come upon, the, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were on his arms became like flax that were burnt with fire, and his bands loose from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With a jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, 
have I slain a thousand men. I can't imagine going into war and myself alone killing a thousand people or having to sit there and wait for them to kill me before I'm waiting for the Holy Ghost to come upon me so that I've got the strength to do these things. So what I'm saying is there's a, there are a lot of examples so far. Now for my last example, we have Jesus when he was baptized by, the, by John the Baptist in John 1, 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but he should be, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and in a boat on him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said to me, On whom you shall see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Now I realize that we didn't hear Jesus speaking in tongues or any of the other things that come with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But my point is that we don't see Jesus begging for God to send down the Holy Ghost. We see Jesus being baptized and immediately the Holy Ghost comes upon him. So in all these cases, we're seeing that God saying, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. God loves us so much that he's already got heaps and stores of things that he's waiting to give to us. But we're sitting there wait going, Lord, Lord, send it. Lord, send it. Like Pastor Byron says, God has already sent and done everything that he can do. But it's us who gets in the way. And in Luke 24, 46, it says, and he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance or remission of sin should be preached in his name among all the nations. And you are witnesses of the thing. Behold, I send the promise of the Father. This is where he's going to tarry. But he, but he said to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Why does Jesus say here that they have to tarry until the Holy Ghost has been sent? They had to tarry because the Holy Spirit, Jesus said to them, he said, I have to go away so that I can send the Holy Ghost. When Jesus died, was resurrected and went, made his way back to heaven, then he sent the Holy Ghost to reside in us. So Jesus, when he was on the earth, lived with them. But Jesus can't, couldn't at that time be everywhere at all times. He was only one man. He could be only one place. But when he sent the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit, can, could be everywhere at all times. So they had to wait because Jesus hadn't sent the Holy Ghost yet. Jesus had to do all the things he had to do in heaven first, and then he could send the Holy Ghost to them. So <clears throat> unfortunately, a lot of churches have taken that and said that we all have to wait until God sends the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost is living in us and with us already. And like Keith Moore said, you know, when he went, went to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he went up front and some guys are going, hang on, brother, hang on, brother, let loose, brother, let loose, brother. So <laughs> you're kind of confusing the guy into what, you know, what's going to do. What's, instead of like we do now, we say, I want you to say this, accept the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you that you baptized me in the Holy Spirit. And then it's yours. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait until he comes because he's already sitting there waiting for you going, I'm right here, just accept me. I'm right here, just speak. Instead of waiting for him to speak it through your mouth, you just speak and then he'll take, take control of your words. Because when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> we're not speaking our words. We're speaking the words of the Spirit through our mouth. You don't understand it in tongues until you decide to focus on the interpretive, get, becoming able to interpret your own tongue. You can interpret your own tongue. But a lot of us believe that we can just speak in tongues, but there's, that's as far as we go with it. We don't. Paul says, I prefer that you interpret because... When we speak in tongues, just in tongues, then we're just speaking out of our heart to God. But everybody around us, you know, is our own tongue is to, in, to build us up. But when we can interpret, then our tongue can reach other people that are, living, are around us. Don't wait. 
Don't think you have to wait when, you're, when you ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Expect to speak right now. Expect to speak right now. It may take a little bit of time for you to let go enough to let God control you and just, and just, just speak. And then once you've done that, then you'll become more comfortable, even if it's a syllable, you know, if it's just shada, shada, just speak it, just shada, speak it, until you can pick up another word, shada maokoseya, shada maokoseya, mini yada de bekasa. It just becomes a flow that you have, and you don't have to wait. Don't let anybody tell you you have to wait. You got it. He's sitting there beside you going, come on, let's take this travel with me. Go with me. He loves you. He wants you to have it. That's why when Paul went someplace and like that one scripture, he says, have you received the Holy Spirit? That's the first thing he asked him. That's how important the Holy Spirit is. And Jesus said, go wait until you're endued with power, which means that if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's a power that you don't have yet and you need it. He just told you that. Okay. Well, my name's Joel Shea. Thank you.